Mitch, great to talk to you. Uh, enjoyed watching you in GP3 in 2011 and um, very impressed, obviously, with your sudden arrival in the Toyota Series in, in 2012. First of all, just tell us a little bit about the build-up to that, why you didn't do the full season and, and you joined it when you did. Um, oh, it was just basically uh, the reason why we didn't do it was um, I, I've, I've already done two years of the season. Um, you know, it's it's a great championship. It really is. Um, you know, especially for New Zealand motorsport, it's great. But uh, I really wanted to have a decent break over the over our summer and uh, over Europeans uh, winter, um, just so I can you know recharge for the GP3 season. Um, and we sort of use the, the Grand Prix and, and hand the downs as a to scrape the rust off before I head back to Europe for the for the GP3 testing. Um, and I think that was a it was a perfect way to start the year. Um, even though we didn't really quite get the results what we they were wanting, we uh, definitely showed that we're in great shape for the season. And uh, I guess that's that that's what matters. Well, you hit the ground running, Hampton Downs. That win out of the box uh, must have been very satisfying for you. It was. Um, you know, I've been following the championship when it started this year, and it seemed bloody competitive to be honest. And uh, I was I was a little bit worried heading into. The, <laughs> I'll admit that, um, but it was a huge sign of relief when I put it on pole and, and won the first race. Um, I think everyone's just up your game, you know, not just not just the drivers, but the teams as well. Um, and you know, we did the same in, in, in Manfield. I think we raised the bar even higher, and I'm just ready to, you know, uh, to, 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 to really take on the um, the GB3 championship. You know, it's 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 shaping up to be a great year, and uh, I'm going to use all my experience from last year to this year, and uh, I really want to do a good job. Well, before we get on to that, let's just talk a little bit more about New Zealand. Uh, you mentioned how competitive it was. Um, I think you're quite good buddies with Nick Cassidy, right, who's, who's now uh, won the championship, and he inherited that win in the New Zealand Grand Prix from you. Uh, tell us a little bit about Nick and, and his background. Yeah, Nick, um, myself and Nick raced against each other oh, ever since we started in go-karts. Um, We've always been huge rivals, which I guess um, is good uh, off the track, but on the track it gets uh, gets pretty pretty uh, aggressive, and it's, uh, it's it's a great little relationship we've got going on. Um, you know, off track, um, you know, nowadays we're we're always hanging out together and uh, playing tennis and stuff. Um, he hasn't quite beaten me, um, so uh, it's great. Um, but you know, myself and Nick get on really well, um, and he's had a really successful karting background. Um, you know, he's a brilliant driver, and uh, I really think he's going to go far in, in his career. And I, I wish him all the best, especially for this year, because I think he's got some great news coming up and uh, great opportunities. So I just really hope, uh, you know, saying really good works out for him because he works hard and uh, he deserves to, to be uh, to, to have opportunity to head to Europe or, or, or you know, to, to another country. So, yeah. Mitch, you had another win uh, in race one in uh, in Manfield, and the, and you're walking away with the Grand Prix race in the bag. And it looked to me like those cars, it's a one-make formula at the end of the day, are pretty reliable and just incredible. You would have, uh, I think, an electrical misfire with, what, seven laps to go in the New Zealand Grand Prix with the race in the bag. Yeah. Um, I hate to say all that again. You don't want to hear all that. <laughs> That's right. No, unfortunately, it wasn't eight laps later, but um, that, that the electrical failure happened, but... Hey, it was just one of those things, um, you know, what happened was when, uh, when I'm not sure, or one of the mechanics, uh, when they were putting my nose box on for the Grand Prix, they accidentally pinched a wire um, between the cockpit and the, and the, and the wing, um, which, you know, it, it was sucked in between um, them for the whole race, and it was wearing away, and then it just went bang with, uh, with oh. seven laps to go, and... Well, obviously looking pretty good, but it's not over till it's over, as uh, as it happened, and um, that's the way it is. But I, I guess we showed uh, our, our true pace and um, showed that we're in great shape for for my European season. I guess that really that's what really matters. Um, you know, I would love to win the Grand Prix, and I worked bloody hard at it, but um, that's just the way it goes, and that's motorsport in the end. Well, you're the moral winner for what it's worth, uh, and your mate Nick won the race, so in, in the end of the day, I bet you guys had a, had a good party afterwards. Um, we heard a little bit about you doing some sort of boot camp with uh, a certain Aussie grit, Mark Webber, uh, prior to coming over to New Zealand. Tell us a little bit about that, Mitch. Yeah, um, obviously with my relationship with Mark, uh, he actually does a, you know, normally before a F1 season, he likes to 
get into good shape before before testing and all that um and does does a training week um different parts of the world and this year he uh he we did it in australia um he's got a place in noosa which is just north of brisbane um beautiful home and uh beautiful uh part of the world up there it's uh, it's truly amazing and brilliant for training um so myself and uh and him and, and our trainer went up there and um, you know smashed it up for, for for six days, which was great. Um, you know, it's great to to train alongside Mark and learn off him. Um, he's obviously at the top of his game, and uh, you know he, he's even though obviously he's probably one of the oldest in the field, he's he's definitely not showing it. He's uh, he's driving probably the best he's ever been, and he's in probably the best shape, one of the best shapes he's ever been in as well. So uh, yeah, it's great to be alongside him and. Um, yeah, the, the week was fantastic. It was it was mixed up between a whole lot of different activities, um, a lot of hiking and and kayaking and stuff, which was great. Um, a lot of adventure stuff, what, which what he's into, which is uh, it's really cool because I haven't really experienced that before. Um, it's, it's it's it just really makes training a whole lot of fun in the end, which is uh, it always helps because sometimes you know training is not not that not that much fun, but when you can make it fun, you always want to do it. So. Um, yeah, the week was was fantastic, and um, I think we're in great shape for the season. Uh, uh, Mitch, speaking of great shape, how do you stack up next to the old man when you when you got a one on one cardiovascular thing, cycling or whatever it is? How actually do you compare with Mark now in in, in terms of fitness? Um, <laughs> it's hard to say, really. Um, I'm slowly catching up to him. Um, you know, I'm trying to pick his brains a bit with with training and all that, and. Um, you know, I'm slowly, I'm slowly getting in there, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's been great just to obviously cycle with them and all that, just to experience what, what you know, what level I need to be at before you know, if I get the opportunity to to, to, to race in a higher class. So um, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be uh, matching him soon, and um, I'm working really hard, you know, when I'm not with them to to make sure when I'm with, when I'm with them that I'm not you not know, falling behind or anything. So. Um, yeah. Mitch, how did it feel to come back to New Zealand with the experience that you now have in Europe and, and the results that you've achieved and knowing you're going back now very shortly to Portugal for the first GP3 test of the year? How does it feel for you to be coming back to New Zealand and seeing the racing there and your old mates uh, and, and your old life there? It's great. You know, I, I love coming back to New Zealand. Um, and then coming back with a whole lot of knowledge from my European season was was even better. Um, you know, I could really use that to my advantage. I guess against you know with, with Nick that he, he just hasn't quite had that experience. Um, I could really that was a massive advantage for me. Um, and yeah, I just I just uh, capitalized on everything I learned and and in GB three really. Um, and it turned out to be you know really worthwhile. And it just shows you the more experience you. You, you, you know, the more you, when you experience more, basically, um, it really, really helps you um, on and off track. Um, you know, it's really helped my technical side of of driving um, off the circuit, and then and then when I'm on it, um, I'm able to push myself a little bit harder. So, yeah, it was great coming back to New Zealand and uh, and you know, competing against some old mates like Nick and and some new competitors as well. Well, let's hope you continue to do that. I don't know, you probably won't remember this, but back in the 80s when Alan Jones won the World Championship for Williams, he came back to Australia and did a few races with a Williams against lots of Formula 5000 cars and stuff. And it was just a nice thing to do, you know, to come back to your hometown again. And I, and I hope it's something that, uh, that perhaps racing allows you to do over the years. Um, tell us a little bit about the pictures behind you and where you're actually speaking from at the moment. Yeah, well, I'm currently at my father's work um, in Auckland. He's got a panel bedding shop. Um, and the picture behind me, I'm not sure if you know, but he is a current holder of the New Zealand land speed record. Oh, wow. um, he did this in 94, um, just after I was born. Oh, sorry, 96, sorry. Um, and it's a picture of him, and he had a massive accident during it. Um, he just broke the record, and he, they went to put more horsepower, oh, a different um, computer uh, mapping in the car, and... Um, high octane fuel, and it brought the car up to about a thousand horsepower. Um, but on his last last go, he was he was you know he he, he was smashing his other record, and then uh, his right rear tire disintegrated. And um, there's a few pictures that result in that, which uh, you can see in this photo here. Wow! It's, <laughs> wow! Yeah, amazing. I think Amazing. there's about thirteen 
somersault sort of things. And uh, in that in that last roll, his um his actually arm flew out the window and got and got basically uh, severed. So um, he's he's very lucky to have his arm still, but. Yeah, it was a. I obviously can't remember it, but um, it was a huge. Uh, I'm not really sure if it was a huge loss or, or not a huge disappointment or or what in that in that day because we he got the record and he still holds it. But um, obviously, he uh, had an accident which um, you know that it has had has hurt him for the rest of his life with uh, with his arm. But um, hey, I would say hey, yeah. I, I would say it was it's great to have the record. And he's an incredibly lucky guy, and uh, he should enjoy the rest of his life with that record tucked under his belt. Mitch, great talking to you, and looking forward to seeing you in Europe very soon. You've got lots of fans over here as well. Uh, looking forward to this GP3 season. Again, driving for um, Arden Weber team in, in GP3. Got to win the championship this year, mate. That's the plan. Um, I'm working incredibly hard back here, you know, prepare myself. It's my maximum before I head overseas, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to take it on. And I think I'm going to come back even stronger compared to last year. You know, I've I've, I've learned all the circuits, and that was the major barrier from last year. I um, was learning the circuits, and I know how it all works over there now. And uh, I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hugely motivated at the moment to to get that championship. Good stuff. Well, condolences again on not winning the New Zealand Grand Prix, but you did everything you could and uh, everything but win it. And uh, very best of luck with 2012. We'll be following you very closely and look forward to talking to you again when uh, the European season's underway. Yeah, cheers, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Mitch.